goal. I hope you're ready to get hooked on a feeling because we got to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie, everybody. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for joining me today as we do another Marvel United Deep dive. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button, and click the bell. And hey, check out what I've got for you. An opportunity to invite you into a world of magic and adventure and mystery and plenty of wizards. That's right. You can get a copy of my fantasy novel, We Were Wizards, which is available on Amazon all over the world. You don't like hardcover? You can get paperback. You don't like paperback? You can get ebook. You don't like ebook? You can get hardcover. Rock, paper, scissors, baby. This is my pride and joy, uh, a novel series I've been working on for many, many years. And the first two books in the series are available right now. I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can go to Amazon and pick up a copy for yourself. Or maybe you don't like fantasy, but you want to pick up a copy for somebody you know and love. Who does? Because trust me, this is so up their alley, they're never going to want to leave. All right, today we're blasting off into outer space and snacking on some strange multicolored candy that looks like comets and stuff. I think that's what they ate in the movies. They ate a lot of weird stuff. But we're talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy remix expansion for Marvel United. You know how these deep dives work by now. If you're new, welcome aboard. I am giving you a first-hand look at what comes in every single expansion for the great board game that is Marvel United. Uh, so you can make an educated decision on whether or not each expansion is right for you. Because some people don't want it all. Some people want to cherry pick, and that is cool too. So, put your Sony Walkman headphones on, press play on the tape, let's hit the table and see exactly what these Guardians have to offer. This is our beautiful Guardians of the Galaxy remix box and we're gonna take a look at the back of it right now being very careful as always not to upset the inside and once again we've got a box that comes with a Kickstarter exclusive character and that's Miss Gamora right here. Gamora does not come in this box unless you have the Kickstarter version so people who buy at retail, just be aware they left out a very big character. Zoe Saldana must be furious right now. Let's open her up. And as usual, we have our lovely instruction leaflet with just enough information to get you started. And let's read the little flavor blurb as they welcome us to the vastness of the galaxy. The Guardians of the Galaxy have made a name for themselves traveling the stars, fighting for the helpless, Writing wrongs and occasionally wronging a few rights, but by and large their good deeds outshine the bad, and Ronan the Accuser has had enough. The Guardians have interfered with Ronan's people, the Kree, in their self-proclaimed righteous wars for the last time. Ronan ranks amongst the most formidable villains the Guardians have ever faced, and his master plan is as simple as can be. Put an end to the Guardians. Permanently. In personal combat, even the quartet of Star-Lord, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, and Gamora have little chance against the Accuser wielding his godlike universal weapon. So they mention Gamora, even though she's often absent from this box. They must scramble their way from star to star, helping where they can and thwarting Ronin's minions whenever possible. No place is safe for the Guardians as long as Ronin hounds their steps. Their only hope is to gather enough strength to finally defeat Ronin or frustrate his plans long enough to give up the hunt. Either way... The Guardians of the Galaxy are in a race against time. And on the back here is a nice giant picture of Gamora with everything that you get in the box and a description of the Plan B Challenge, which we will go over very soon. And as we remove El Plastico from the box, we can take a look at what's inside, starting with our six locations that come inside here. And they are all very cosmic locations, because of course they are. So there is Morag which is, let me shed some more light on Morag, there we go. That is where Peter Quill was at the beginning of the Guardians movie. The Milano, which is their ship. Very cool looking ship, beautiful colors and design. The Kiln, which I don't remember what Kiln is. Nowhere, where there's a giant head of a celestial. Fun fact, if you buy my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards, I have a location 
very important in the story that is also called Nowhere, but without the K. The Collector's Museum, which looks great. Um, I wonder if we'll ever see the Collector in this game one day. I don't know. He's kind of a strange character. And Xandar, home of the Nova Corps. And that's all the locations you get. They were pretty much, I think all of them were in the movie. Kiln was the prison. That's right. Kiln was the prison in the movie. So all of these locations you can find in the movie, as makes sense, because season one was all about riding them MCU coattails. And nothing wrong with that. And then inside here, we've got the villain dashboard for Ronan the Accuser. And he has no special setup or anything on the back. He's just a plain, simple villain who does a lot of damage with his universal weapon. He's a tough guy. And underneath that is all of our cards and such. We will look at these hero cards first and foremost. So let's get uh, Rocket and Groot out of the way. So... Here are the cards for Groot and Rocket. Here are their hero decks. They are separate characters from each other, so it's not like uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 where you have them both stuck together. Rocket and Groot are separate, and they both do their own very different things, which I like. Uh, that's how it should be. They're two very individual people, right? You don't want to stick them together all the time, even though they're best friends. Very nice cards. Rocket uh, is all about giving tokens and wild tokens and such, and Groot helps the group out because he's a helpful guy. And underneath that, we have Gamora and Star-Lord. And Star-Lord's cards are pretty basic from what I remember. I haven't used him in a long time. That's why he was at the bottom. He just happened to have been the, the one I used the longest ago. And then Gamora, who is Kickstarter exclusive with her lovely green skin... And she's got that crazy sword with, like, the forked blade, which looks great. And this white armor is definitely more comic accurate. I don't think she wore that in the movies. Maybe in the last movie. Can't remember. But there is Gamora. And once again, if you are missing her, it is not a huge issue. It's only because you have the retail version. And we can jump on to the villain side here with Ronan. Ronan the Accuser's villain deck. Does he have henchmen? I don't think he does, no. He's just got regular old threats and then a very basic set of master plan cards. It took me a long time. Whoa, there goes his card. His card is flopping away in the wind here. Um, because I play randomly, it's, uh, it just, you know, I end up playing whoever my random generator tells me to play as. And Ronan was one of the last villains I ever faced because it took a long, long time for the generator to generate his name. Um, he was probably like one of the last 10, if I remember right. So he stuck around for a long time before I finally got a chance to play against Ronan. And over here in this very deep well, there's some KO tokens, which will come with the box um, because Ronan KOs people and that's how he wins by KOing every hero. So you want the KO tokens there with you. And then this is the plan B challenge that they added. So it's very fitting and thematic to the Guardians of the Galaxy. I love it. And it's plain and simple. Instead of using the regular three mission cards, you use these Plan B mission cards. So they're exactly the same, but you essentially have to do a lot more. So instead of having to do four threats and nine of each of the civilians and thugs, this time you have 12 of these guys and six threats. So you essentially, you can win the game without even having to worry about taking out Ronan by just getting rid of every threat and taking care of 12 thugs and 12 civilians. Uh, and it's very, very Guardians because they're all about having a plan B, just finding outside of the box ways to defeat their adversaries. So what a great idea to throw this in here. Another excellent season one challenge. And finally, we are going to take a look at these miniatures. Uh, so who is my least favorite here? I think my least favorite miniature in here is Rocket. He's got the big gun, which is nice, uh, and it's fitting for him. But uh, I don't know. It just, uh, the the miniature isn't anything special. It's fine. It's not bad. It's just a fine Rocket Raccoon. His tail is very sharp. It looks like he's got a giant, like, wasp abdomen instead of a tail. Um, but this is a perfectly serviceable Rocket. It's just, I like the other miniatures better. 
and he's standing on something, and I can't tell what it is. It's probably like a little bomb or missile or something, because Rocket uh, loves his munitions. Uh, next, we will go with Gamora. Gamora has her forked sword there, which can get a little bent, but nothing too serious. And she's just kind of lugging that sword around behind her because it's a big, heavy sword. And that's that's about it, really. It's just a very simple Gamora pose. She's a warrior, right? So that may, that's a good warrior pose. She's got like a Conan the Barbarian kind of pose going on. So it totally suits her. But that's Gamora. Next, we'll take a look at Ronan the Accuser, who is just a delight with his giant hammer, which apparently is called the Ultimate Weapon, which is a really lame name for a weapon, Marvel Comics. Come on. But there he is. Uh, he looks like some kind of mad high priest, which I think is exactly what they go for with Ronan. He's kind of a zealot. So it it nails the look of him. He's got that holier-than-thou kind of look to him. Very sanctimonious guy. He thinks he deserves the universe. Yeah, that's Ronan. Mean dude. And then next we'll go take a look at Star-Lord. Uh, just a very fun pose for Star-Lord. He's got his twin blasters, those very unique blasters that uh, sum him up so well. He's got this red mark on his forehead, and I think that's a error from when they printed uh, or molded these, rather because I've seen other Star-Lords that I think don't have those. So I have a special one with a red dot error. Uh, maybe that means he's worth something. I don't know. But he's got his cool jacket, very dynamic pose, very Peter Quill. They nailed it. And finally, it probably comes as no surprise to anyone, but my favorite mini in this box is Groot. It's adult Groot, which I love. I love all the different Groots. Baby Groot is adorable. Teen Groot is fun, but... Adult Groot is my favorite Groot. And uh, they just, they nailed his long limbs and his heroic face and how he's kind of aloof, even though he can be scary. There's cuteness involved. It's it's a little bit of everything. Groot is such a special character. Uh, and they they got the, the wooden tree skin down to a T. They figured out a way. Love it. That means if we ever get Lord of the Rings United one day, you know we're in good hands with the Ents. And that is everything that comes in the Guardians of the Galaxy box. Now it's time, as always, to start putting things away. And I'm going to be adding things that I keep in this box that aren't part of what comes in the box. Because that's just how I roll. So first and foremost, underneath those heroes there, I'm just going to put the... Equipment cards for Star-Lord and Gamora, which I keep in that handy little well right there. That way they're always there when they're needed. I'm shocked Rocket didn't have any equipment. He's a very equipment kind of guy, but they didn't make him any. Oh, well. Uh, in this empty well right here, which, I mean, there was so much room in this box, I just went ahead and added all the other Guardians characters who didn't come in here. So Nebula's here, and Drax, and Yondu, and Mantis. I've got all their decks here. And it fits perfectly, right? Again, thank you so much, Simon, for putting that extra room because it helped immensely. And I really hope in DC Superheroes United and in any other future seasons you make, you keep doing that because it was with season three, stuff was really tight. But with season one, I was able to get everything where I needed it to get. Uh, okay, and then underneath Ronan here... I'm going to stick those, and as well, I will stick the other villains I keep in here. I keep Kang in here, and I keep the High Evolutionary in here. He does not have backs to his cards. I forgot he's special. I keep the High Evolutionary because he was in Guardians 3. Makes sense. I keep Kang in here just because I needed to get rid of an extra villain from the Kickstarter box, and I figured, okay, Kang is a blue cosmic villain. Ronan is a blue cosmic villain. It's a mnemonic. I know. I'll remember that they are together in here. So I keep those just there, and they fit perfectly. Maybe one day if we ever get an Ego villain, I will replace Kang with Ego. And then I just slap their dashboards as well right on top like so. And we can put the locations back. And that is all she wrote. And by she, I mean Gomorrah. Unless you got the retail version, in which case by she, I mean Nova Prime, I guess. 
And that'll do it for the Guardians remix. All right, song's over. So it's time to take a gander at our points. How many points of worthiness is the Guardians of the Galaxy remix expansion worth? Well, let's break it down. The box comes with five minis, which gives us five points. Four of those minis are heroes, which gives us another cool four points. Keeping in mind that one of those heroes, Gamora, is Kickstarter exclusive. So you may not end up with her in your box, or you may if you're lucky. One villain comes in the box, Ronan the Accuser. Villains are worth two points in our merry little points system, as well as six locations. Those are worth half a point each for a nice little total of three there. And finally, you have a challenge in the Plan B challenge mode, which gives us another one point. Five plus four plus two plus three plus one equals 15 points, just like Enter the Spider-Verse. The thing about Season 1, at least the parts of Season 1 that we've talked about thus far, is they were very equal in terms of what you're getting in an expansion box. They really tried to keep each one symmetrical in that way. Whereas if you look at Seasons 2 and 3, those expansions are bananas, right? They're all over the place. You can get one box that has like four figures in it, and it's just a plain old Jane old box. And then the next day they announce a box that has nine figures in it and all those figures are gigantic and they come with like 20 different modes. And it's like, wow, you put a lot of thought into that box, Simon. That is something that we can look forward to having fun talking about in seasons two and three. But for now, season one is par for the course. For now. If you know anything about season one, you know that the final two expansions of the season shake things up a whole lot, and they are what we're talking about next. Next week on The Deep Dive, we're staying in outer space, but it's getting a little chilly, so we may want to put on a gauntlet or two to keep our hands warm. The Infinity Gauntlet is next. I will see you all there. Until then, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in here on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for Marvel, I mean, DC superheroes united still got to get used to that a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter see you next time